Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Walt here from Down the Block Sports, and today I want to talk about the NBA. There's a team in the Western Conference that's just not getting talked about enough for the season they're having. They're currently on a 10-game winning streak as the number one team in their respective division. Joining me to talk about that team and more is Kyle Russo from Review and Preview Sports. Kyle, what's going on, man? Welcome back. Thank you for having me, Alec. It's good to be back on with you, man. Awesome. Well, that team is the Memphis Grizzlies. They're currently on a 10-game winning streak. Their record on the 2022 season, 29-14, and 14, have a nice five-and-a-half game lead over the Dallas Mavericks as we stand today in the Southwest Division. So uh, this Memphis Grizzlies team has showed up to play here, Kyle, in 2022. No, they absolutely have, and they're shocking people. Uh, left and right, just out of the NBA. You know, each season is, is unique and brings its own uniqueness every year based on a, a surprise team. And by far, I think that a lot of people can agree upon is that the Memphis Grizzlies are the biggest surprise. Just in these last 10 games alone, Alec, they've beaten the Lakers twice. They've beaten the Brooklyn Nets. They've beaten the Clippers. They've beaten the Phoenix Suns. They just beat the Golden State Warriors. Those are all the teams that before the season even started, we're talking about Western Conference finals favorites and most of those teams favorites to win the whole thing when all is said and done. Yeah. And they're beating these teams comfortably. What's so scary about this team, and this is what I wanted to bring up to you before, is I'm going to read you off a couple names, and this is just this is insane to me. I don't think I've ever seen a team do what they've done as early as they've done it. So players like Desmond Bain, Dylan Brooks, John Moran, obviously, Jaron Jackson, Tyus Jones, Xavier Tillman. You know what all those guys have in common, which is just insanity to me? I think I know the answer. Is it age? They are all under the age of 25. I figured 25. that's where you were going. And the other two players that are a part of the success, which is, again, mind-boggling, because these two guys, especially the one guy that I'm going to bring up, feels like he's been in the league forever. Kyle Anderson and Steven Adams, they're both 28 years of age. Steven Adams feels like he's like in his 30s. Wow, I thought he was like 33. It's just, it's, it's <laughs> insanity to me that they are having as much success as they're having, as young as they are. Again, there's nothing flashy about the names on this list with really the exception of a John ja Morant. But they're winning games against solid NBA teams. Yeah, Kyle, you talked about that uh, winning streak here. The Suns game was in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. The Brooklyn game was in Brooklyn. The Cavs game was in Cleveland. Yep. The Clippers game was in L.A. And the second of two wins against the Lakers was also in Los Angeles. So these yep. aren't just wins they're having in Memphis. They're going to tough environments against some of the top players in this game. And they are picking up some wins. Now, you mentioned a name here who's having one hell of a season, and that's John Morant. After yesterday, beating Stephen Curry and the Golden State Warriors, he was a lock for the most part, in my opinion, to make the Western Conference All-Star team. It's not even up for debate at this point. This dude is making some noise. Listen, listen to John Morant's numbers from last year to this year. His points per game's up nearly six points. His turnovers are at a career low, even though it's you know very, 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 very small. Yeah, it's still a number yeah. I got to mention. Um, steals are up, blocks are up, rebounds are nearly up two per game. His three point shooting percentage is currently at a career high. His field goal percentage is currently at a career high. Kyle, he's only played in 30 games this season, so the percentages and the numbers could be a lot different down the road. I could even see his yeah. points going up because his last two months, his points per game are currently higher than his season average. Yeah, but the star he gets. It seems like John Morant is getting better every single year entering his third year, being in his third season in the NBA. It is, and you have to credit the the team in which they built around him on top of his own individual success. And also, you know, people forget uh, Alec. If you're not a true basketball fan, if I was to ask just a a, a basket somebody who watches basketball in general, would you even know who the head coach of the Memphis Grizzlies is? Probably not. Taylor Jenkins has been the head coach there for, since 2019 now. Yeah. And he's done one hell of a job. In fact, he's one win away now from getting that Memphis Grizzlies record since he became the head coach 
up to a 500 record of potentially 73 and 73, which doesn't sound like a lot. But when you look at the previous history of guys like David Fisdale and guys like Dave Yeager and guys like Lionel Hollins, they don't have a lot of coaching success in their career. For So for them to be doing something like this at such a young age, too, you got to remember, because those other previous coaches that I mentioned, they had veterans like Zebo and Zach Randolph. They had yeah. guys like Jeff Green. They had guys in Marcus Gasol and Mike Connolly. Seasoned veterans with some also experience in there as well. Chandler Parsons. These these guys are all under or, or even younger than the age of 25 years old, and they're bawling out of their minds right now. Like, you have guys on here, multiple guys that can be on the uh, list of most improved. You look at Ja, he could be up for it. You look at Desmond yeah. Bain. Talk about his one. numbers. He's almost he's almost doubled his points per game in, in one season. Yeah. That, that's crazy to me to even think about considering that he's shooting the same numbers, basically. He has the same rebounds, basically, the same assists. He's playing about five or six more minutes, but almost doubling your points in one year. Last year was his rookie year, I believe, at a TCU. That's yeah. crazy. That's crazy, the development that they're having in Memphis. Yeah, he, he's having one hell of a year. We're going to revisit Desmond Bain in just a few seconds as a Boston Celtics fan. I kind of wish they kept the draft pick. Uh, they've been looking for that type of player on their team for years. And when they had the chance to take Des Desmond Bain in the draft, of course they didn't. He's having one hell of a season. Good for him. But you brought up Taylor Jenkins, and I'm happy you did. Because we're going to be doing midseason awards later here on Down the Block Sports. And, you know, I've kind of been, when it comes to Coach of the Year, I've been kind of like, yeah, it's going to Steve Kerr. It's going to Steve Kerr. I've been kind of almost forgetting about the award. Yeah. Has he kind of entered himself here in the race for a little bit of a nice second half here between Kerr and Jenkins, in my opinion, for who could be winning that award? I think you definitely have to reconsider, right? I mean, because yeah. I think that, you know, you talk about Kerr, obviously, I think that in my personal opinion, at least in the West, and obviously they don't look to give the award out back-to-back uh, -back years. I know that Monty Williams took it last year. or Did he Did he win it last year with the Suns? I believe he did. I don't know who else would have won it. He won it. He, I believe he did win it last year. I don't think that they're going to give it to him again, but again, well-deserving the Western Conference. Another and then, like you one. said, Steve Kerr, another guy who's been, again, they're only going to get better with now Clay Thompson, James Wiseman will be coming back soon. So not a lot of losses coming the Golden State Warriors' way. But again, the development that I've seen out of this – Memphis Grizzlies team who people again with the assessment of just John Morant nobody thought this team was going anywhere like they would make the playoffs especially with the play-in but not at the not at the third fourth seed in the Western Conference right now competing with the likes of Golden State uh beating them beating the Phoenix Suns who are number one yeah. in the Western Conference only being a game or two behind Utah right now nobody could have pictured that so when you it's, watch this when you watch this team play yeah what about it is giving them that extra energy to beat some of these top teams in the Western Conference? I think it's got to be with youth, right? Because they play at a very, very fast pace. They're yeah. very patient and they're very efficient too. Like these guys are all great shooters. Like I think you just saw Desmond Bain shooting 42% from the three-point line. Ja, the worst part about his shooting statistic is just his, his free throw percentage, which is 76, which is not bad, but 37% from the three-point line and almost 50% from the field. Yeah, that's I mean, that's crazy numbers out of a third year player and a point guard. Nonetheless, you don't even see that out of some centers in the NBA. It's a point guard who shoots the ball a multitude of times a night, being the the all star on the team, the face of the team and shooting that efficiently is is crazy. Well, other than John Morant, one of the guys who returned from injury was mm -hmm. Jaron Jackson Jr. has played, I believe, in all 42 of their games this season solid numbers in his return 16 and uh five and a half roughly rebounds per game pretty nice to see him back on the court as kind of that that's been that young duo for a couple years there in memphis and it was tough to not see him there last year but when this team took that next next step he's been there for the ride this season yeah a big thing last season when we reflect back is everybody was talking about golden state barely making the playoffs and they say well what could they have been if if Stephen Curry didn't have to carry them on their backs to a play-in game, if Klay Thompson was there to take kind of the pressure off him. Well, same thing goes for the Memphis Grizzlies. Jaron Jackson gets forgotten about. He was just a fourth-round pick just a couple years back with a lot of high aspirations out of Michigan State. This was one of the best potential players to enter that NBA draft at that point in time. And when he's playing, he's one of the best in the games. Again, 16.5 points, 
five and a half rebounds, not the biggest of numbers again, but he missed a decent amount of time last season. I believe this is his third year, but technically again, being the fact that he missed all this time last year, this is really only his second year in the league. Really only his second year to kind of gel with the rest of the team, especially when we talk about chemistry. That's what's so impressive is that they're forming together all being so young. Like a lot of these guys are only first year, second year players. Like Xavier Williams, that was their, that was a first round pick this year. And you're watching him drop what 17 points against the Golden State Warriors the other night. I mean, He's that's, playing a lot more lately. That's that's nuts to me. You, you have Jaron Jackson coming back into the fold again. The rebounds might not be that impressive, especially at the height that he stands. But you don't need that when you have guys like Stephen Adams. When you have, I know they brought in this uh, somebody, Killian Tilly, who's participating at the center, uh, six foot ten, six foot eleven guy who grabs boards for them. You know, they just they are a team that has a lot of. I don't want to say forgotten faces, but but people, uh, if, unless you're a basketball aficionado, unless you're a guy that invests your time in the NBA, you're not going to know half of these names. But you should because they're playing really, really great basketball right now. Yeah, like I said in the open, they're a team in the West that's just getting not – they're not getting talked about enough. And no. it's unfortunate they're that four seed – in the Western Conference. Again, it doesn't surprise me that they're not getting the national attention that they deserve, but that's why we're talking about them here on Down the Block Sports. You brought up Desmond Bain. Uh, let's look at some of those numbers here as I pull up his stats from the 2021 season. Average 9.2 points per game last season, up to 17 and a half. We talked about most improved player on the last episode with Miles Bridges, Bain, certainly a candidate with him for that award this upcoming season. In your opinion, what's been the huge reason for him taking that massive step forward? I I, I really don't know. I really don't. And you could really ask <laughs> that for it's 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 not a bad question, but there's really no answer, right, Alec? Because what's the what's the big answer for almost everybody on this team when you look at the development and, and evolving of each and one of these games? I mean, we talk about rookie development all the time with players. That's like a that's like a four five year period. That's not a one year turnaround. Yeah. And all these guys, a one year turnaround. Desmond Bain, one year. Uh Brandon Clark. Remember his name got brought up in the summer league. He was the MVP of the cha- in the summer league championship. He's participating now, almost averaging ten points a game, five rebounds per game. He's only been in the league two years now. Zaire Williams in his first year, he's getting huge minutes. Ja Morant, only a third year player, uh, third fourth year player. Jaron Jackson, third-year player, but really only a second-year player. With Desmond Bain, and I don't know if you've seen it, the confidence. This is what I love about teams like this, is people, especially as somebody – so, Alec, as you know, I'm a Heat fan. And when Tyler here was playing the way he was playing in his rookie season, everybody gave him him flack for it and was like, you know, this kid's a rookie. He shouldn't be talking. And then he had a bad season. And in the beginning of the season, he was talking like, my name should be in the conversation when you talk about guys like Zion Williamson. Luka Doncic, Trey Young, all those other great rookies that entered in around the same time as him. And you know what? He's playing exactly like it. Except with the Memphis Grizzlies, all these players have that same mentality. They have that same mentality. They're not getting the recognition, but that's what they feed off of. That's why they're playing the way that they're playing right now. Because they're playing like dogs right now. Like this is this is crazy to see just again the development with a guy that, again, was an assistant with the Milwaukee Bucks for a long time. So they're a team that has been brought up with development, right? Guys like Chris Middleton, guys like Giannis Antetokounmpo. They've had the developmental process, guys in the past like Malcolm Brogdon. They've been a team that's able to develop. Him being an assistant under a Budenholzer, then coming to the Memphis Grizzlies the first couple of years, bringing in, flushing out all the old, getting rid of Mike Connolly, getting rid of Marcus Gasol, bringing all this youth and talent. We knew it would take time. But nobody thought the turnaround would be this quick. And I can promise you that nobody would have thought that they'd be competing with the likes of the Golden State Warriors, Phoenix Suns, and Utah Jazz right now. Well, if they're going to want to continue competing with those three teams in the Western Conference, heck, even some of the teams below them in a playoff series, they're going to have to be buyers here at the deadline. I certainly expect them to do so. Kyle, if you were the general manager of the Memphis Grizzlies, and you were looking at this roster, where do you think is a spot they should add at the deadline? It's tough. It's tough because you know they have the assets, but it's going to be a matter of fact whether or not they're going to want to pull the trigger and mess with the chemistry in which they already have, which I don't know personally if they would want to do that. That's That's my biggest plea with them right now. 
you know, I, I've looked at some trade proposals before with the with the Grizzlies, and actually somebody that's that's tied to them, which maybe you don't necessarily want to hear. Somebody that they've actually been tied to, whether or not they make the decision to do so, the Boston Celtics, is a Jalen Brown. They've been tied to him. They've been tied to him if this rebuild does, in fact, happen in Boston. And I think that, that, that that's potentially a, a great spot for him to land. People are on the bandwagon of saying that Jalen Brown and, and Jason Tatum can't play together. I don't believe that. I believe they're a solid coach away and some solid key role players away from building. But if they're legitimately considering that, they are a team, you know, in which we talked about when we talked about DeMontis Sabonis, you want to talk about a team that has assets. The amount of youth that is on that team and all the youth is, like, phenomenal, that's a team that can afford to give up some assets. It's just going to be a matter of fact if they want to trade any of those guys away. Maybe another guy that they could be invested in, just off the top of my head that I'm thinking, because they have a bunch of great shooters, but maybe so more so of a veteran shooter, even though he's young himself. If the Sacramento Kings finally blow it up, maybe they should be invested on a buddy healed potentially to improve upon that perimeter shooting, which is already at a great number. But if they just want to add to that shooting guard uh, depth, because I know it leads with guys like Dylan Brooks and the likes of other players as well off the bench uh, with Tyus Jones, potentially if you run him at the point or you run him at the shooting guard, that could potentially improve the team. But those would be the avenues in which I'd be looking to because we know for a fact they're definitely going to be buyers, right? Again, do we know if they're going to win the next uh, another 10 games in a row? No. But they're going to be making the playoffs. That's a fact. And if they keep this up, they're going to be buyers at the deadline, which comes up in what, like a month, less than a month the deadline Yeah, I think it's the uh, February 10th. So we got a little bit – we got about four weeks or so as teams try and figure out uh, their roster to compete for an NBA championship. In regards to Jalen Brown, there is no way he moves for at least the next two years, in my opinion. Uh, Does him and John Morant sound like a perfect duo? Absolutely. So – yeah, if they end up being teammates down the road, good for them. Uh, Buddy Heald, I think that's a good name to mention. Uh, when you look at uh, their roster, of course, when they get Dylan Brooks back, if they're going to have some score going on to the bench, no matter what they do with their starting lineup, still wait to see. Probably Zaire and have Brooks take over at the three. Um, when you look at their bench right now, Jones, Melton, Conchar, Anderson, Clark. I mean, there's not really anyone on there that blows you away. Yeah. Um, they kind of – they could use that Jordan Clarkson-esque guy. Um, of course, whoever would be going back to uh, Sacramento in your uh, proposal there could determine which roster, which spot uh, in the rotation is open. We still have to kind of figure those things out. But I definitely think them going after some sort of spark, specifically on the off the bench, wouldn't be a terrible decision. But – they're a really good roster, and I do think they could be a pest to some of these teams here in the Western Conference in a playoff series. So, Kyle, let's kind of look at the future here. Okay. Um, obviously, whoever they play in the West, uh, they're probably going to be playing a team that's more experienced than them in the postseason. But uh, when you look at Steven Adams, he's expected to be back. He's currently dealing with COVID. Uh, you look at uh, Dylan Brooks, he's expected to be back in about a month or so as he's dealing with an injury. So put their full roster in front of you right now. What can this team do in the Western Conference? I think they could definitely make some noise. The way they're playing right now, I think it's almost a guaranteed getting out of the first round, right? Because when you look at – if you just look at the seeding alone, like if the season was to end today, look at this Western Conference, right? Can they beat a Dallas? Absolutely. 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 That's a great matchup. Can they beat a Denver Nuggets? I would think so. I would really, especially if Jamal Murray doesn't come back. I, I know that Michael Porter Jr. is basically done for the year. That's a team they could absolutely beat. They could absolutely beat that team. And LA Lakers, again, we don't know with LeBron. You always have to say it's like the Bill Belichick effect. It's like the Nick Saban effect. If you have that guy on your team, don't ever bet against them because you're going to be wrong. But at the same point in time, we've seen the trials and tribulations that they've gone through. On top of the fact that, like you said, Alec, in this 10-game win streak, they've gone on the road twice and beat the Lakers twice. Granted, that's without Anthony Davis still and without that chemistry that they probably will have towards the playoff time and period, but they could definitely beat them in a 6-7 game series the way they're playing right now, especially because of the fact that the Lakers are a much, much older team. Yeah, And I think we'll struggle to keep up with the pace of this youthful Grizzlies team. You look at the Clippers, there's been reports right now that Paul George may not even play a game this season. They shut him down for the season. 
Kawhi Leonard may not play this season. The Clippers are done. You look at Minnesota. I don't – Minnesota's youthful too, but they, they really have nothing outside of really Anthony Edwards and, and Carl Anthony Towns right now. Portland, Damian Lillard's having abdomen it's surgery. Not his time. The Point being is that they don't have to worry about anybody that they're playing in the first round. My only concern, if I'm the Grizzlies, is that three teams in front of me, and that's the Jazz, that's the Golden State Warriors, and that's the Phoenix Suns, which they wouldn't have to worry about until a second or Western Conference appearance, Western Conference Finals appearance. So how far is the gap? It's tough, right? Because when you look at the Golden State Warriors, we know what they are. We know exactly what they are, but at the same point in time, when they played Clay Thompson in his return, that was his what? That's his first game back, right? In how yeah. many in in how many missed how many missed years? How many missed games? Getting his groove, getting his feel back for the game. So I don't want to say that's not a it's not a true assessment. Uh, again, it's a win against the Golden State Warriors. It's huge because they've still been a great team with or without them. But let's see where they're at in the playoffs. Again, they still don't have Wiseman. I know people are kind of sleeping on them. I think that's going to be a huge, huge factor. Because no matter what anybody says, I think the youth that Wiseman has, the potential that he has, is way higher than a Kavon Looney had, way higher than a Bogut, way higher than a Zaza Pachulia. I think that's almost a guaranteed that he will be better in that shape and form. And Draymond Green is, you know, while the last couple of years kind of fallen off, kind of rejuvenated himself back into that defensive-minded player of the year conversation. You look at the Phoenix Suns, they're another team that is probably the most well-built all-around team in the NBA, right? They have their mixture of young players that have really become students of the game with the teacher and Chris Paul running the floor. Like the success of Devin Booker and the success of more so DeAndre Ayton has been at the helm of Chris Paul being the point guard. Jay Crowder has looked fantastic. Mikael Bridges. Mikael Bridges is incredible. He's becoming one of my favorite under the radar, low key NBA players to watch, youthful players that when all said is done, like that's a guy, if the Suns make it to the Western Conference Finals, which is definitely a reality, that's a guy that's going to be a he- huge part in terms of them winning Cameron Johnson as well. They have guys like Landry Shamet. They have guys like Frank Kaminsky, JaVale McGee, which was a nice add. They have guys like Dario Sarge. They have other guys as well that can contribute. They're a really well rounded team. I think that they can really really compete with them my only thing is this with the and i'll talk about utah as well with utah first before i get into it when i round it out with utah i like what they've done but you've seen that jordan clarkson is kind of taking a step back you've seen mike Connolly has just been okay you've heard the rumors that donovan mitchell may not look to re-up with the utah jazz you you've seen the struggles this year more than you did in the years past even though they're still succeeding it's weird, right? People are talking about them like they're not a team that's succeeding. Meanwhile, they're the third best team in the Western Conference because nobody's giving them the recognition, just like we're talking about Memphis, because when we know come playoff time, they're a team that just falls short every single year. And now they're not really playing like that. Now you're hearing guys like Jordan Clarkson may become available. A Joe Ingles might become available. We don't know. But when I look at this team in general, the only thing that they don't have behind them which I don't know that at the deadline that person's going to be there, is they just don't have the veteran leadership, the the key veteran leadership, right? I mean, you have a guy like Mike Connolly with Utah. That's key. That's huge. You have guys on the Phoenix Suns like a Chris Paul. That's huge. Golden State, as crazy as they play, that team is full of veterans. Full of veterans and the greatest shooters of all time. They don't even need it. Yeah. When you look at the Grizzlies, they got Steve Adams. I mean, who has some, you know, has a lot of playoff experience with his days in OKC, even a finals, uh, a finals appearance in his, in his youthful days with the OKC Thunder. But they don't have, uh, they don't have the floor general leader to lead them when it comes playoff time. That's the only concern and the only thing that separates me from seriously taking them, because in terms of fast pace play, I think they compete with everybody. Because I don't think that there's any, I don't think there's any more youthful or faster paced team than the Memphis Grizzlies right now. But at the same time, when it comes down to when things start getting tough, because if they have to play a game like the Phoenix Suns, play a team like the Golden State Warriors or the Utah Jazz, that's not a clean sweep, wipe away team. 
that's a series you're going six, seven games every single time. And when things get tough and you have to regroup, you need that veteran presence there. And right now, my biggest concern, even though I think John Morant, as young as he is, he's the leader of that team, they don't have that veteran leadership right now. Should be a wild ride to end the season here in the Western Conference. Don't forget about the Memphis Grizzlies, everyone. They're having a hell of a season. It looks like they're going to have a strong second half to the year. Kyle, before we let you go, how can our listeners here keep in touch with you on social media? So on social media, I'm a big Instagram person. My 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 tag is at, at Kyle Russo, 612. Uh, I'm on Review and Preview, like Alec alluded to in the intro, on Review and Preview on Facebook Live every Tuesday night from uh, 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock at night. We talk all things sports, obviously, in the midst of the football season. That's something that we're heavily covering right now. But we have a, a branch of different shows in which we feature basketball shows, baseball shows. We just got a new show added to the program earlier today, which make sure to check out called Tricks and Picks. Great show for, for those that like the sports betting. And a lot of other platforms as well. Big Blue Avenue, our giant show we have on Thursday night. But to find me individually, review and preview every Tuesday night from 7 to 9 o'clock. And make sure to follow me on Instagram if you like what I said. All right. Well, if you like all things here on Down the Block Sports, feel free to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Kyle and I are going to be talking basketball at least once a week, hopefully, for the remainder of this season and beyond. So if you like what we're talking about here, like this video, subscribe to the channel. And whenever you see basketball content, there's a good chance. You'll see at me and Kyle here on Down the Block Sports. What do you think of the Memphis Grizzlies in the 2022 season? Do you consider them a contender here in the Western Conference? Give me your thoughts in the comments section below. Also, again, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more of my exclusive content. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in, and we will see you very soon.